Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, it's time to dive into our Noob Sound 6P1 again. And today we're going to be looking at the original schematic versus the schematic of the amp we're rewiring this into. And I really like this new design. It's a much simpler layout. There's less stuff in the signal path. And being a pentode, it's going to have a whole lot more power than triode strapping this tube. We're going to be using these EL84. I've got a pair of these gold lions that we're going to be using. And then we've got a 6SF5 that we're going to be using for the driver tube. And I'm going to show you, like I said, the similarities and the differences between the two schematics and why we're using this design to rewire or rebuild this amp into a good sounding amplifier. So let's jump into it. Okay, so let's look at the original 6P1 schematic and what we're working from. And as you can see, we have this tube rectifier and we got 275 volts coming out of the rectifier. And I'm pretty sure that these voltages that I've noted in the schematic are with the bucking transformer in place so that we have 110 volts going in. And I'm going to look at ways of dealing with that as we go into this build. But for now, let's just look at these voltages. So we got 275 volts coming out of the rectifier. This amp does have a choke inside it that we're going to be using. And it's showing we got 265 volts coming out of here. Now, one of the things that we have addressed is having two 150 UF caps is really bad. That that's what kills these rectifier tubes. And in the past, we replaced this first one with a 22 UF and we went ahead and just left this 150 after the choke because the choke gives us the resistance to slow the inrush current that would cause problems. Now, one thing we may play around with is lowering this one some and see if it makes the transformer run cooler, but that's further in our experimentation with this amp. So to start with, we're going to use this 22 UF here. We're going to have the choke. We have the 150 UF, we got 265 volts going to the output transformer. Then we have this 1.5K dropping resistor. We did add this 470K 2 watt bleeder resistor that bleeds the voltage off these caps when you turn the amp off, which is always a good idea to have on a tube power supply. So we have a 1.5K. And we have a 22 UF filter cap here. This decouples this 255 volts from the power going to the output transformer. And then this goes to the front of the amp. So we got 265 volts, 255 volts. And then what's up here is all going to change. So let's look at the first early version of Dave G's Maggie mod. Okay. So we see we've got a tube rectifier. He's using a 6CA4 because he didn't have a 5 volt winding, which we do. As you see, got a choke here. He used a 40 UF and a 40 UF, where we're using a 22 and a 150. And I'll show you on the PSUD2 software how all that figures into the ripple that we're going to see in this 265 volt. So he's wanting 265 volts going into the output transformer, which we have. And then we've got this 5K output transformer that we're going to be installing in the amp. 8 ohm tap on the output, and that goes up here to the plate of the 6BQ5 or EL84. This is going to be wired as a pentode instead of triode strapped like the original amp. And triode strap means that you hook the screen to the plate with a 100 ohm resistor. We're not doing that. We're going to be putting 
245 volts to 255 volts on the screen. And you can see here, we got a 120 ohm cathode resistor with a 100 UF cap bypassing it. The reason you do that is we want the AC to be directly grounded off of the cathode. And so that's what this cap is here for, to bypass this resistor to make sure that the AC is grounded. This 470K resistor here is referencing the grid of the output tube to ground. And you can see here, he's got 5.7 volts on the cathode. And by doing that, you create 5.7 negative volts on the grid of the output tube, which creates our bias point. Comes up here, we got our coupling cap to connect the input stage to the output. We have this 245 volts that goes to the screen. It also comes over here and powers up our front end. We have a 470K plate load resistor. So this voltage comes up here. We got a voltage drop from 245 to 118 volts that allows the input tube to create the voltage swing or amplification that we need to drive this output tube. And I'll put a link below to a how do tubes amplify video that I did earlier to explain this if you're not familiar with how all that works. So here we got 1.4 volts on the cathode. He's got a 820 ohm resistor here. Now one unique thing that I haven't seen before, but we're gonna follow what Dave did here. He's got a 150K resistor from this point to the cathode. And I believe he's done that to stabilize this voltage here. So that's kind of a unique thing I've never seen before, but we're going to go with Dave's schematic because people say this amp sounds really good. Now on the input, we've got this 10K grid stopper. And then we've got a 470K grid leak resistor that, again, references the grid to ground so that we have a negative 1.4 volts of bias on the grid. Now, the other thing we've got going on is he's got global negative feedback going across the whole amplifier, and it comes off of this 8-ohm tap. we got this 47-ohm resistor with a 0.1 cap to ground on this leg of the output transformer, and then we've got 10K with a 300 PF cap across it that gives us 17 dB of negative feedback comes around and connects to the cathode of the input tube to get it in the same phase or the negative phase I should say to make sure that this is negative feedback and not positive feedback and that is going to lower the harmonic distortion that we would get from running this as a pentode which is giving us the extra power the other interesting thing he's doing here is this is the heaters, and then he's got 100 ohm resistor to a center point, and then the center point is tied to this cathode to elevate the heater to 5.7 volts positive. Probably be fine to tie that to ground, but we're going to go ahead and tie it to this cathode like Dave did in the schematic. And as you can see, the power supply here ends up being almost exactly what we've already got here the same voltages. And so I'm not going to mess with this a whole lot. We may be playing with the value of this resistor here to get the screen voltage where we want. So he did have a later revision of this amp. And you can see here that he's changed the value of this resistor to make this 255 volts instead of the previous 245 volts. So like I said, We'll be playing with the value of this dropping resistor to get this to this 255 volts. Basically, you want the plate and the screen to be the same voltage or maybe a volt or two below. 
I'm a believer in that the screen should be slightly below the plate voltage. The other thing he did, which we're not going to be doing, is he added this 50 ohm adjustable bias pot with a test point where you can like perfectly dial in this 5.85 volt reading to like I said perfectly dial in the bias point of this tube I just don't think it's necessary you're gonna maybe get a quarter of a watt more power in he did this more as an engineering exercise, I believe, than being a noticeable performance increase. And it just adds another layer of complication that then you have to check this to see if you've got the bias set right. And you got to get a meter and just, I'm just going to put a 120 ohm resistor in there and let this thing self bias wherever it's going to be. And it's going to be close enough. And that's really the only difference between this and his early version is he changed the value of this resistor and he added this adjustment here, which I just feel like is going to add complication to the amp that doesn't have a lot of value. So anyway, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be converting it to use this 6BQ5 tube. Instead of using a 12AX7, we're going to be using this tube here, which is a 6SF5. And the reason we're doing that is this is an octal tube that we can use the octal sockets. And it's also a single triode so that we can use two of these to complete the amplifier, one for each channel. And... It's got the same amplification factor of 100, like a 12AX7. All the other specs are identical to this being an octal version of one half of a 12AX7. And you can see here that it's a very linear tube. You can see the gaps between these lines here are very even. And this is just going to be a really nice sounding tube, I believe. Now another option, if you want to play around with it, would be to use the 6SQ7 like I used in my EL34 amp. That's another tube with an amplification factor of 100. It's got like an extra diode in here that we don't use. And later I'll show you how you would wire one of those up. And that's another thing you could play with if you wanted to. So you can either use this 6SF5, which I do have a couple of these in my tube stash, so I'm going to be using those. But if you wanted to use a 6SQ7, you could do that too. So basically, we're doing it so that we have one output tube, which is a 9-pin. We've got one driver tube, which is a 8-pin, and it'll work with our sockets. And then here we're going to be using an 8-pin rectifier tube. And the other thing we can do is play with the rectifier tube that we use to change this voltage if we need to. Now, the last thing is, again, I think these voltages were measured with a bucking transformer. So we may need to use a rectifier tube that has more voltage drop across it to get where we want to be. And you can always add a little resistance in here in series with this choke if we need to to get the voltage that we're looking for. So I'm not too concerned about that. Or you can even add it here before this first gap. And that just makes life for this rectifier tube a little easier. Again, with a single-ended amp, having a little bit of extra resistance in the power supply isn't a huge thing, even though I do believe that low ohms power supplies tend to sound better. So we're going to play with all that. Then as far as getting this heater voltage drop down, we may end up putting some resistance in the heater circuit to drop the voltage down where we want to see it. But again, that's going to be some trial and error stuff as we work on this amp. So that kind of shows you what the schematics and what we're going to be doing with this and how we're going to be changing it from this 
mess to a much simpler circuit like this and running it as a pinto with this having the screen powered from this where we have triode strapped these tubes and that's going to be the main difference we're going to make so yeah i think that's a good place to wrap up this little explanation of how we're going to be modifying this amp well i hope that helped you understand what we're going to be doing with this little amplifier electrically or electronically and why we're doing this and i think this is going to really make this a much cooler amplifier for one thing there's a lot more of these different el84 tubes that we can roll into this amp where before there was either the china or the russia that was it there wasn't much tube rolling that could go on there and Again, you can either use this 6SF5 or you can wire this up to use a 6SQ7. And I'll show you the differences between the two. And again, already started kind of stripping this thing down, getting ready to do these mods or actually the rebuild of it. I wouldn't call this a mod video because we're drastically changing the circuit and the amplifier. It's more of a DIY amp build that you can use an existing chassis or maybe an amp that you already own as a starting point. So, anyway, hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters and the other folks that make donations to the site and other folks that help out with the channel in other ways, like sending me this amplifier and being patient while I get time to work on it. So, until the next video... Have a nice day.